momentum. 
So Don't worry about the NBA thing today. Yeah, we got small Latin. I'm sure they're going to take over today. So, um, but I, he may or may not. I'm not going to follow up with him this morning. But the last time I talked to him at seven o'clock, he's like, "Yeah, I'll get you somebody." Who? The guy from uh, Brian Bleacher Report. Yeah. Then I asked him if he can do it. He's like, "Yeah, I can probably do it. I'll let you know." And then he ghosted me. Okay. But uh, here's the the Bleacher Report stuff. Um, if it happens. Hey, we got a remote for this TV. John McKay, did I see, John McKay, did I see that you were, you had surgery? I'm glad to see that you made it through, my brother, and hopefully everything is well with you. Um, speedy, speedy, speedy recovery, my brother, speedy recovery. Shout out to the Brook, baby boy. Memorial and the Bishop Ford traffic is moving freely in both directions. Stevenson Tune in to Illinois Minotti tomorrow night. Share with everybody. Over I'm the about the to break it down. 390 to the old post office, a 33 minute commute, slow between Mannheim and Des Plaines, outbound 28 minutes. In Von Kennedy O'Hare to downtown, slow between Chicago Avenue and Pulaski, 21 minutes both directions. Lakeshore Drive, no delays. Cloudy today with snow starting in the evening, highs in the upper 30s. Tonight down to 21, right now it's 25 degrees. That's a look at our traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson. It's 6.08 on 1690 AM WVON. The views expressed on our programs are not necessarily those of WVON, Midway Broadcasting Corporation, or our participating sponsors. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Rise and shine with the WVON Morning Show. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Featuring Mays Jackson. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The WVON Morning Show. Wake up. Call 773-591-1690. Wake up!
Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Oh, good morning, Maze. Feeling great. Oh, my goodness, Todd. There's so much going on. There's so much to talk about. I cannot wait to jump all into it. Um, so let me do this. I'm not going to start with the morning banter as I usually do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and introduce everybody. We're going to get the plane up, up up and away. So let me start by saying what's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? Okay, wonderful. That's great to hear. Happy to hear it. All right, I gotta say what's up to the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? Uh, you know what, Sonya's around here dropping off donuts and all that good stuff. They got the heart-shaped donuts she brought in the box. Talk about some, she love y'all. Isn't, isn't today the 12th? Yeah, you, Sonya, man. See, oh. <laughs> let me tell you what Sonya's doing. Hold on, let me tell you what. <laughs> let me tell you what's happening. Huh? What's happening is Sonya is re-gifting us. See, <laughs> Sonya is the human drink magnet, and she is essentially re-gifting us. See, that was probably her early morning sweetheart gift that she probably had to get. <laughs> no, 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 that was pro no, 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 no. Oh, see, you see, that was the goodbye, sweetie gift that somebody gave her on the way, and she was like, I got to get rid of these because. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, then. We are going to have us some heart-shaped donuts as we take this thing up, up, up and away. Let's get this thing up to 50,000 feet. This is the WVON Morning Show. Yes. All right, Todd, uh, first of all, let's do this. Let's take the plane and take a look out the left window, and you can see New Hampshire. Bye. Uh, bye, New Hampshire. <laughs> Actually, it's by. It goes really. pretty quickly, man. It Joe is. Biden didn't even wait for the results. No. He was like, I'm he here. was like, <clears throat> oh, no. I, uh -uh. He said, I ain't got time for this. Jumped on a plane and headed to, um, headed to South Carolina, where he hopes, you know, I think South Carolina... We will find out if Joe Biden will make it. I think, quite frankly, that uh, I was going to say that uh, Michael Bloomberg ate Joe Biden's lunch, but I'm going to say he bought Biden. Joe Biden's lunch. <laughs> he bought, you know, like Joe Biden came to lunch. Joe Biden started out as the kid that came to lunch. You know how your parents pack you like the kids that used to come with the bomb packed lunch. To school, they would take out a sandwich. You know, you might have a piece of fruit. They had like a cupcake, some cookies, and, some and everything. Back in my day, it would come in a uh, nice cartoon lunchbox. Yes, yes, in a nice cartoon with the, with the thermos with the hot stuff, and they would open it up and yeah. right. And then comes uh, Mike Bloomberg, who buys a la carte. Right? Mm -hmm. remember, remember when you finally got to like uh, from remember when you went from grammar school. To junior high, and when you got to junior high, you could pick. Like, you didn't have to eat, and they would be like, you can have pizza if you like. You can have. Mike Bloomberg is like, I got a smorgasbord. Mm -hmm. He brought a smorgasbord. Or even better, Mike Bloomberg is like the kid whose parents sent pizza for lunch. That kid ruled the whole school for, like, the whole day. I never heard anything like that, but okay. okay. What? Wait, you yeah. never had, like, yeah. you, you never had, like, a kid whose parents. You heard of that? Uh-huh, and they bring pop and juice. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Like, that's, that was the show out parents. Like, the parents would be like, my kid's birthday, you know, you bring cupcakes back in the day. You Nowadays, you can't even have cupcakes. You can't bring nothing. But back in the day, before kids were allergic to everything nowadays, but back in the day, you know, you would bring, um like, you know, you thought you, everybody tried to do something, you get you some cupcakes, then you might go to Jewel, get you some fancy cupcakes with your name on them, then you might even get one with a little thing stuck in it. <gasps> But what would always be the show out parent was the parent who was like, oh, yes, we had lunch catered. Uh, and so now all of you all can have Portillo's today. And you'd be like, for real. We'd be like, and, and you know who used to do it? The lamest kids. So that then they could be friends with everybody. You'd be like, can I be your friend? Remember, you'd be like, let me be your friend. Because you, you know what? Let me stop. It's the, I said I was going to get distracted. And then here I go. <laughs> With the pizza story. All right, well, Joe Biden's lunch has been bought by uh, Mike Bloomberg. Hey, Mike, we trying to eat around here, dog. What's up? <laughs> Tell them people, hey, man, Todd need a new laptop. Hey, man, I'm trying to find me a couple little candidates right now. I got to do my, you know. Let me stop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. Hey, Todd, I want to send a big shout out to everybody 
who came out to um, the What's In It For The Black People meeting last night. We had an awesome, awesome, awesome turnout. Um, we had our first Latino attendee. Yeah. Roberto Sepulveda. You should have known that though, right? Roberto, Roberto done been to every What's In It For The Black People event since day one. He been to more What's In It For The, oh wait, wait. Sonia like, I'm the first. Sonia, I be forgetting. Which yeah. I'm actually like, go. Oh, Sometimes I, I, I no, you, and I, no, nah, you, Sonia, you know, like, first of all, like, half of the people initially started as people who listen to the morning show. Right. They'd be like, I listen to the morning show. I listen to the morning show. You, I'm telling you, you be famous in the camp. But anyway, whole point of the matter is we had our What's In For The Black People, our monthly meeting. Um, and Todd, uh, first of all, it was great turnout, but it, I was so proud to announce this. So you give me a drum roll. So look, and you got to let it roll till I, till I announce the bill number. But find me a drum roll because Todd, yesterday at the What's In It For The Black People meeting, we made a big announcement um, that I could not post on Facebook until I shared with the What's In It For The Black People people. But now, Todd... I must get my paper. House Bill 4865. It is the BEP Award of State Contracts. But let me just read a little bit of the bill that was filed yesterday by Cam Buckner. That be Cam BM Buckner, State Representative. It says, uh, amends the business enterprise to my... For Minorities, Women, and Persons with Disabilities Act provides that it shall be established to uh, as a goal to award state contracts to businesses, check this out, owned by descendants of American slavery as a stat, uh, a total, oh, excuse me, state contracts to businesses owned by descendants of American slavery in the total dollar amount that is proportionate to the, per, to the percentage of such persons who are residents of this state. Todd, uh, essentially this is what we have been asking for for building for towards for three years. The filing of House Bill 4865, which seeks to separate black, well, and we call it descendants of American slaves so that we didn't get all caught up in everything, but we was clear about what we meant. Yeah. The bill has been filed. I got a call yesterday. Uh, so it was filed by State Rep. Cam Buckner. Got a call yesterday from Leader Jahan Gordon Booth, who has said that she will join on as a chief co-sponsor. Now, you know she's in leadership, right. which means that we're getting ready to start building some momentum and some steam. We are actually talking about building something instead of breaking it. Ah. Ah. So, we'll talk to you a little bit more about that, but I am so excited to announce the filing of House Bill 4865 to give us descendants of American slavery the opportunity to be separated from the pack. We'll be back after traffic news. I mean, traffic and the weather. More of the morning show. With <laughs> we got our bill filed. Traffic and the weather. Traffic we got our bill filed. We got, now it's the work time. But now instead of going down to Springfield just to go now we have a reason to go and we have something to lobby for. Now, it will be very hard for anybody, whether you're with reparations, with your DOS, whatever, ADOS, to fight against the fact that we do not want to be included in the minority pile. Does that make sense? Again, finding things that black people can unify around, and regardless of what you go down to Springfield for, you can stop in and say, Excuse me, by the way, are you signed on to the BEP Award of State Contracts Bill? Whenever you're ready. Mike Stratmanis. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, y'all, the bill is filed. House bill. Go to ILGA.gov. Search HB forty eight sixty five. Ty, will you join us in our lobbying efforts for um, legislators that you know? Sure. 
Now, the goal is to get one of these filed at the county and one at the city. Right. To have them all working simultaneously so we can coalesce the black people around it. Now, can I also make a understanding now? So, as people sign on to this bill, it would be greatly appreciated because we're trying to pass the bill that you don't MF them in the process. Hmm. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but let me put it this way. You win more, what do you say? You get more fly for honey than you do with sugar, but not shit. Because yeah. I think they like shit more. Um, however, as our legislators decide to sign on to the bill, we need for you to then congratulate them, right? Because then what you understand, my friends, and I'm really trying to help us win. See, I want to get past just being happy to fight. Far too often, I believe that we have become comfortable with the fight without a win. We like to say, man, he knew I was there, as compared to saying we won the whole joint. So, what I am saying is, it will be very difficult for anybody to tell us no, black, to sign on. Anybody black that doesn't sign on, then makes themselves aware. However, it is also a great opportunity, because we won't oppose if the Latinos want to break themselves out as well, let them. If the LGBT community wants to sign on to the bill, let them. If the Asians want to sign on to the bill, let them. We just want ours. Right? See? Because if we protect our peace, then we don't got to worry about nobody else's peace. Does that make sense? So, let's get a win under our belts, guys. We got the bill filed, but there's work to do. Let's do it. And y'all all need to send Cam Buckner a shout out. Do things my way, but not a word do you say. Don't even look my way. Yeah. my time, wasting my time, talking till I'm black and blue. See, I wanna get next to you. Go ahead, Ty. <laughs> Ty. <laughs> Dreams of you and I go sailing by whenever your eyes meet mine. You're so fine. And girl, you make me feel so insecure, so beautiful and pure. Why must you be unkind? Tell me which much my kind, blowing my mind. Girl, why? Here's no, you know, I, I can't take you to the fancy places you might want to go. Still, I want to get next to you. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host uh, starring on vocals, Tosh Trojan. Hey, Todd. You yes, know sir. what? Somebody told me yesterday at the What's in the Front of Black People meeting that. They was like, that Todd could sing, man. They was like, Todd, was you in the choir, man? That was oh, excuse me. me, you were in the chorus. That you were a chorus guy. Not that's many hours of the shower. shower. That's many. <laughs> <laughs> you studied in Shower University? Yes. All right. All right, well, y'all, that was. You always sound, sound good. good. You, you know what? I be thinking I sound good everywhere, but apparently not to the uh, social media Facebook Live audience. I was going to serenade y'all, but I said I was going to give it back. Let Ty go ahead and get his shine on. All right, Ty, let me run through this uh, real quick. Uh, in case you were under a rock. Um, Juicy Smouye ah. is to be reindicted. You know what? I wish I had the clip because Todd, I had some sort of faith in Dan Webb that he would smash this thing. 
Because you know what made me think about you don't know, damn. <laughs> well, apparently, you know why I thought he was gonna smash it, and then I then and I was as I was reading cast this morning, I realized I forgot what I always forget, which is you can't be arguing over which white person is more racist. Right? <laughs> they do it different ways, but one of the things that you know what I think what made me think that damn Webb would um, maybe let Kim get a pass was because of the Michael Koshman case. Where he let the um, kid that the one the that the mayor's cut nephew uh -huh. punched and killed. Right, right. Right. He 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 like gave him exonerated it. You know, pushed it all to the side. I was like, so man, you know, he probably he on he's one of the he's with the team. You know, I so, but then I realized. You mean team rich? No, well, team rich, team white, team right. And I think the one thing I forgot was, you know, he wasn't gonna. You know, stand up for the sister. You know what was really curious to me, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, was the response. Because I was like, when they said James Comey-esque, this is very James Comey-esque, I was like, huh? Yeah, I saw that too. I didn't. And then Carrie was like, what the heck is, who is, J first of all, I'm, I'm sorry, she was like, who is James Comey? And I was like, you remember the guy from the trunk with the, and I think people are so worn out that they just had all of the names that started to just blend together, right? From the Trump stuff. Yes, there's always something. And then it turned into a Trump thing. Like, and they were like, and this is like Donald Trump and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, uh. But the Comey S thing, I was like, nobody black knows what the heck you're talking about. But then it made sense to me. It wasn't, because the black people are going to be loyal. They're going to still stick with you. For the most part. Yes. yes. Although there is some, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, but I then realized that they were talking to white women. Mm. They were talking to white women who, remember white folks always got an option. Oh. And I'm going to go back into this a little bit later. But the James Comey-esque, and I was like, whoa, why are you doing that? But then I was like, then I, you... Man, we're going to talk about this because I want to talk about when the fix is in the old boy network versus Kim Fox. Because, y'all, I feel like this is a straight up, like, you they, you watching it play out in front well, of Well, and this, she, she made a mistake by grabbing a, a, a bulldog and throwing some meat in front of him and then saying, don't eat that. Right. <laughs> and then, look, the way they position it now is this is your make good for the uh, daily joint. You can get back with all the good right. Now right. You can show that I am fair, really. Right, right. You know, like when the refs make a, a call and then they make a make up a call. I don't like this. I don't like how this is shaping up. Uh did you see? Check this out. Did you know there's a new black all twenty four hour now black news channel? I saw that. But I didn't read it though. Black news channel launched by guess who? Black people. Mm -hmm. But they're Republicans because they have money. Uh -huh. <laughs> JC Watts. Oh, that's J C Watts. You know, I like J.C. Watts, man. I used to like him even, maybe because he was an Oklahoma Sooner and he played football or whatever. And I was like, this yeah. brother this brother is making it happen. I like J.C. I saw the picture of him and I was like, dang it, I'm old. <laughs> Jay, hey, man, but J.C. Watts started uh, the Black News Show. Maybe there's an opportunity, man. Maybe, maybe I could get a show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did you see Lightfoot is backing off her automatic prerogative? She's still trying to do the sneak around downstate. Uh, Jeanette Taylor told us about that too but she was going to try and ban aldermanic privilege when it comes to signs uh, somebody called in and said you really cruising for a bro you really want to get a you really want to be the first mayor to go down alright y'all it's Tough Chicago 1690 we got some more headlines plus social media question of the day we'll be back I'm just afraid of being attacked happens to the best of me <laughs> a little bit man <laughs> so Sean, we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about this. So here, let's talk about it now, since you're here. All right, y'all. Here, let me go back. All right, y'all. So, 
first of all, great job pulling those people together. Um, I see everything probably that you see. I think we they knew that they were going to. They knew they were going to pull it today, and they did time it with the exoneration. Now, here's the challenge. I think there's mixed messaging, right? So she's looking to appeal to white women, but put black clergy to deliver the Comey-esque message. I don't know if black clergy at that moment delivering the message is who they need to be talking to. I think that the black people know that this is a scam and a setup, et cetera. Although I believe that and we could talk about this later. I think that some of the support is soft among the political establishment, combined with the fact that they don't have a lot of ability to deliver. But I don't know if having a group of black ministers delivering the James Comey-esque message works for the people that need to understand the Comey-esque message. So you needed a group of white progressive women to say the Comey-esque message. But what they're doing is scaring all of the white progressives away, pushing her into the black category, making it easier for white folks to marginalize her or to say. Now, if you time that exactly with the same day that she releases all these these prisoners, these Ronald Watts prisoners, you're, we're thinking from a black mindset. They're playing to a whole white audience that is paralleling all of this. And it's like, okay, so I'm going to come back and we'll analyze it more. Flag. Hmm? Flag is messing me up. It's not here. The red, black, and green flag? Yes. Oh, I, you know what? It's hanging at the office. It's okay. like it has this hanging. Oh no, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's throwing me off. I, oh yeah, yeah. it was off. Minutes, it, minutes, I'm like, what's wrong in there? What's wrong in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, but I actually like having the, the WVON. I got to figure out. And now that I got this, it's really cool. Um, so I'm not. And see, here's what's the problem. The problem is somebody will say that I'm hating, and I'm not hating. I'm trying to provide real time analysis. It's like. You have to go into the minds of white people. So right now, all of those white progressives, the first people that should have been hitting back in the surrogate space should have been the Kelly Cassidy's, the Ann Williams's of the world. They should be shoring Kim's base up with white people. Black folks, and it's like, of course you could put 100 ministers together, but think about what we even talk about with black ministers, etc. Now, no shade to any of the ministers that were there, and I appreciate it, right? But I also think like, white folks think different than we do. They do, they do, they do, they do. But I'ma stop, I'ma let it go. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Cause the problem is, They've already accused me of working for Conway, and it's like, no, I'm not. It's like I'm. Um, it's like the one of the things that frustrates the shit out of me is because I don't particularly care for individuals. The first thing that they do is say if I criticize a person or someone on the campaign, or even criticize something that happened on the campaign based on personal experience, the first thing that somebody wants to do is say, oh, well, he's working for the Republican or he's working for somebody else. Because what it does is it makes campaign staffers, uh, it makes it easy to marginalize the things that I say, even though it makes common sense. I'm only telling you things that I think should happen to win, but what winds up happening to me all the time is because I don't just toe the party line, it's like if I say I disagree with that, or if we talk about something and it ain't 100% lockstep, then it becomes, oh, he's working for the opposition. It's like I've been a num one of the number one supporters since day one. It it's just a crazy situation. But as I see these plays being made, it's like, yo, I worked on white campaigns with white progressives. I, mm. 
So that's what it is. All right. What was that? And I love your smile. I love your smile. It's not you. Sean, it ain't you. I get it. It ain't you. It's the, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be free. Free to scream, free to beg, free to make up for the way. Ooh. Saying they wait, cause I love your smile. I love your smile. You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Taj Trojan. Ty, you know what? That song makes me want to smile. It does make me want to smile. Man, Shanice, boy. Sorry. Man, she was like, that. remember her, Tracy Spencer? The good girls. Good black girls. None of that pop your, pop your give me $40 bag before I could get... I don't know that. <laughs> See, man, I'm telling you, all that Megan the Stallion and Hot Girl Summer. And all, this was when the girls was the girls. And, you know, you'd be like, oh, you know, like your son could have somebody look at on TV and you wouldn't be like, son. Right. That's not what you want. Now it's like the stripper culture. This was like when they had on, you you know, the good old days, Ty. The all right, Joe. Days. It's the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. Let me just hit my last couple headlines. Uh, did you see the Justin? Okay, so Todd, for the first time in a long time, in all the stuff that you talk about with Trump and dictatorship and all that stuff, uh -huh. I saw it yesterday. What did he do? Did you see? See, and now he, he done did so much. That he done, did you see that uh, they recommended a nine year? Attention. Right. I think that's what the problem is with this election. Everybody is worn out, so they're not paying attention. So you know, Roger Stone got convicted. Yes. They, the, the sentencing guidelines was like 9 to 10 years. That's what the feds was asked for. Mm -hmm. They William Barr told them they changed their mind. They didn't think he needed that much time. So they went back. And the four guys who prosecuted the case quit because they was like... This is crazy, right? Hey. Well, no. Trump was like, I mean, I could have told him I didn't want it, but I was in within my rights. I didn't say anything, but I could. But I was like... See, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is see, it's that Roger Stone... Stuff. And then how about this? How about Roger Stone went to jail... And as he was walking to jail, he was walking with two black people. Like a black woman, a black woman, black woman, a black man. And you know him and his wife are swingers. No. I Openly know, I swingers. I was like, oh, Lord. I hope <laughs> they're not swinging on their way to the... Let me stop. Um, did, uh, trouble at the county building. Did you see that? They barred somebody from uh, uh, entering the building? Man, it seemed like that guy can't catch a break. That's the same guy who was who was caught recording Carrie, recording the plot against Carrie. So after I do this right now, I'm no more wood to the fire. But you saw the story about uh, Al Kendall. Oh, is that who it is? That's Al Kendall. Yeah. I didn't see the, I didn't see a name of my It name. was in the story. Yeah. Oh. In another story. It was Al Kendall. Uh, apparently, he was <laughs> someone by thanking them, by kissing them on the forehead. And did like the... Apparently he made a kiss. You cannot see me, but I'm doing an Eddie, Eddie Murphy <laughs> looking in the camera like what? <laughs> so he kissed. Her. Apparently he was thanking her for something and kissed her and made a, kissed her on the forehead and like he made a, he made a real sound out of like it. that. Apparently, and he is barred from being in the office now. After this, I'm not gonna put. I wouldn't even kiss my wife at work. Uh, I mean that like a, I'm, I'm a kid. corporation. I'd be like, I'm going to jail. I'm a I'm gonna kiss my baby. Mm -mm. I'd be like, let me get one. My wife works in HR. <laughs> she told me, don't say anything. I hear you on the radio. Don't say that. 
my wife does the same thing, and I'd be like, okay, I won't. And then I'll be right back the next day. Travel again. Boy, but it ain't like the bad old days. But anyway, yeah, so apparently he is uh, banned from, you know, I'm going to stop. I'm going to let it be. No more wood to the fire. I'm done. Okay? I'm yeah. done. See how that works, though? Meanwhile, they spent a whole year conspiring against me, right? You know how you know how when you have your moment, see? Okay, I'm going to stop. All right. Uh, did you see Joe Walsh got out of the president's race? I saw him on, yeah, I saw him on something. And he said that now he is willing to do anything to work with any Democrat to defeat Donald Trump. That's all on WTTW say that. That's exactly right. You know what? We got to start the podcast back because <laughs> now we're almost completely juxtaposed. Right, so so now oh, Joe, right. <laughs> Joe Walsh is gonna be defending black people. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden Joe's smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> you tickle yourself. Uh, and, I tried and, to do <laughs> and by the way, Trump wins New Hampshire. Uh, as we move uh, into that, speaking of winning New Hampshire, Todd, yesterday Bernie Sanders uh, narrowly won. New Hampshire, the New Hampshire primary. Todd, but I was thinking about this, and you know how there's, everybody's talking about there's giant conspiracy by Democrats, like with Iowa and last year and all that, um, to stop Bernie Sanders from becoming the party nominee. I want to ask the social media question of the day. What will happen if somebody outside of the Democratic Party wins the Democratic Party nomination? You mean like Bernie Sanders? Like Bernie Sanders. Like, you've seen party establishment folks are like, man, we do not like him, we don't want him. I don't really feel like he has a right to win the Democratic... I feel like the Democratic Party has the right to do whatever they need to do to thwart him. Like, now, if he wanted to run as an independent at, in the Socialist Party, then they could leave him alone. But, like, again, and I think we've seen this play out, and I want to just break it down for you locally. What happens when you let someone who is not part of your team take over your team? Then it's no longer the same team, right? No. So think about this. Think about the Democratic Party of Cook County before Tony Preckwinkle. Tony Preckwinkle spent her whole career fighting all of those people. And some kind of way, she wound up being in charge of those people. Yes. Right? Party ain't been the same since. No. Party ain't been the same you since. You know what I said about Quinn? You know what Quinn's biggest problem was? What? He was so used to peeing outside the tent. Once he got in, he was still peeing. Exactly. Now let me show you how that plays out again. Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, respectfully, is, in my estimation, not a Democrat. No. And under in the way elections are run here, it gives cover to people who are not because you assume that people are Democrats. And don't have the same kind of ideas at, at the top that you're thinking about. Exactly. So they could just be quiet, nonpartisan, right? You run in a nonpartisan election, but you and you really lean Republican, but nobody really questions you. And now you find yourself atop the Democratic structure as someone with Republican ideals and beliefs. And then when they start kicking your ass, you don't understand what happened. Now, Bernie, the Democratic Party is poised to be put in that same exact position by allowing Bernie Sanders to become their nominee, even though the party structure, even though up until he decided that it was not, it was the easiest path to victory to become and jump into the Democratic Party. He's a Democratic Socialist. That's not, there's no Democratic Socialist caucus inside the Democratic Party. Well, no, there isn't. They just let him caucus with them in the Senate. And he's an he's a invited guest, though. So. Well, well, he done, he took his invitation and put his feet on the Democratic Party's couch. Give us a call, 312-374-8130. What will happen if someone outside the Democratic Party wins the nomination? See, Todd? Oh, look, look turn around. <laughs> I, I, am a fa I am in favor of segregating. I'm in favor of segregation in those cases. 
I, I hate squirrels, but no, I, I do hate squirrels because they get in my uh, attic. But oh yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, Todd just saw Roger Stone walking into his courthouse with his black. The, with the black couple that they, told me he's <laughs> they kinda, swing it. So Todd though, what what like what happens when your enemies in your house? Uh, chaos usually. <laughs> uh, no one knows what to do. No one know. There's a lot of uh, who do I trust? Or you know, depending on where they are in your house, you know, they, of course they're trying to take over the whole place. Uh, and that essentially is what is happening. I want to know how that works out again for black people. You know what I'm saying? Like, really? Um, where does where does? Are we talking about the mayor's office? We talking about it all. Okay. Because again, I'm really talking about people outside of the party. Right. Taking over the party. Like, think about. I think the mayor's office. We are. Screwed, pretty much. I think if you look at the mayor's office, you're watching that. I think that the aldermen may not. I think the aldermen think like, okay, this is a Democrat too, right? So they kind of feel like, but I think as they're starting to recognize, the mayor is really starting to be like, oh, I'm trying to destroy y'all. Anthony Beal was the smartest man in the room, but nobody could notice it. Nobody could notice it because it's like, this is part of the reason we got to get over our long-term beefs because he yeah. did he was right right but people was like mm, no fat me greet like they knew before they should let's talk chicago <laughs> we're gonna come back with traffic and what hey, you got the camera more of this fatty meat and lose the weight at uh, trump's rally on monday he encouraged new hampshire people to register to vote and vote for the weakest democrat <laughs> that, that, that happened oh <laughs> Yes, yes. That happened. That is the strategy. That is the strategy. We're we'll trying it now? Todd, you got I'm not, I'm not surprised that uh, that President Trump <laughs> would, would actively tell people to uh, register as Democrats. I don't know if our state changed. I know that you had to declare your party, and then when the general election came, you couldn't switch parties. I don't know if it's the same anymore. They probably changed that. Things used to be easier here. When I say easier, there was a time when like the, everyone who ran in the county, if they were Republican or Democrat, they could just run as a group. So when you wanted to vote, and probably the biggest thing what ended this was the punch 10. If you punch 10, you voted for all the Democrats. And this is in 1992? Was it 92? Or was it, was it 94? Hmm. I think it was 94. There was a punch ten campaign, and you could do this any. It was anywhere in the state. Everybody did this. Uh, all the counties. But I think it was for the uh, ninety four election. We had punch ten, and one of Pete Phillips's best friends lost in the south suburbs. So when the Republicans took over the state house and they they took over the house and the Senate and uh, Jim Edgar was the governor. Yeah, they passed the law so quick to get rid of being able to vote for all candidates for any party with one vote, and uh, that helped. That hurt. I had been in meetings. Because especially in this county, and, I, and I'm sure du DuPage did the same thing in their county, but they didn't care because they knew there was no Democrats at that time getting going to be elected. Um, but they knew that for the fringe Republicans, because we had at that time Angelo the uh, what was his name Angelo the Angelus, 
was a state senator out in that kind of uh, creek Moni type of area. And Michael McAuliffe was a state rep up in the north and his senator was man a lieutenant in the, in the, and i can't remember his name and the police force but he was republican they were trying to, to protect those people by getting rid of the the punch 10 type of concept coordinated campaigns were good that's really that's where i met uh, speaker madigan really during the coordinated campaigns Ooh. Ooh. Well, mm, it's been a man who took control. Now it's so helpless. Been so hard to know she know. No around for me. What I feel. I'm just selflessly in love. What to do? I'm helplessly in love. It's for you. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Tor Stroger. Todd. Mage. What you know about that uh, new edition, boy? Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, I know a lot about the new edition. No, you don't. But I don't know that song. I don't know that one. Helplessly in love? Yeah, I remember that. I'm just helpless. Hopelessly. Is it helplessly or helplessly? Helplessly. Helplessly in love. Man, I'm going to tell y'all what. Social media question of the day. What will happen if somebody outside of the Democratic Party wins the nomination? Give me a call, 312-374-8130, 312-374-8130. Todd, um, I think, now Todd, White Todd just came in here and said that um, Donald Trump went to uh, New Hampshire and told, the, told Republicans to vote for the weakest Democratic candidate. Right. Um, I'm going to tell you, if Bernie Sanders is a Democratic nominee, we're going to lose. Oh, wait, you, the Democrats are going to lose. They are. I don't know. I think it's going to be... Uh, oh, I think I, I think it's just the opposite, actually. Uh, I think Bernie makes it more of a fight. Because now you've got a fight between two extremes. And as we've seen, uh, you need something to stir people's hearts. See, yeah, I don't. I think Bernie gets will get people fired up because he's different. Yeah, I think that Bernie coming around here telling us that we got to do all these. Like, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I, I think that Bernie is going to. I think all of the people that are in the middle who pay taxes, who who got to pay for what Bernie wants to do, are like, oh no, uh, uh-uh, uh, nope, 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 nope. Because see, the thing is, I, I, I totally I, agree. I think Bernie is playing to, I mean, I get where he's going, but I don't think that established, see, let me tell you what, if Bernie Sanders wins, then you can almost guarantee that establishment party Democrats will work to defeat him and let Trump win again. That's what I I think you are right, but what you're not putting in the equation is if the Bernie people wins the uh, the primaries, then all of a sudden, all the people who didn't care are going to start to care. See, I think, it, and I think, it, but on both sides, and I also think that Bernie, I think that Bernie will not have the access to the national power structure that exists. See, I think there's a there's a network that has been built. Todd, you know, even though the what we have is broken apart, the party has an apparatus, somewhat. Yeah. And that apparatus will shut down for Bernie. Because now at this point, all of the people who think they will be ready in four years are now so in a place like Illinois, Bernie Sanders ain't gonna be this there's no reason for JB Prisker to want to see Bernie Sanders win. I mean he'll tell us that, but if he's planning on running, he's not he would make him have to wait eight years instead of four years. You know what Bernie has to do? Uh 
is as he gains momentum, what will happen is that the people in the college towns, Champaign, Northwestern, you know, Bradley, they will start to get excited. And then they'll start to try to energize people like them. That is Bernie's hope to win. He's not. But but you know what? What what Keenan say? <laughs> well, I think Keenan said it best. Ain't nothing going to happen. Exactly. Frank, you're on the top of Chicago 1690. Brother Frank. Good morning, Mr. Mays. Good morning. How y'all Good doing? Morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Mr. Mays, now you know, I'm, you know you my boy, but I got to go up just with this right here. It's okay. So, I think... I think any of them should be to beat Donald Trump. Cause it could be a massive turnout. We just got to turn up. But if an outsider kid, the Republican Party can come in and win a nomination, like Donald Trump did, why come the outsider of the Democratic Party and do the same thing? If the Republican Party can go as far right as they want to and win with their people supporting them, why come we can't do the same on the left? Bernie Sanders is straight lined up with King Solomon and Jesus Christ. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let these young people win. Let these young people, uh, you know what I'm saying, voice be heard. Their future is at stake. His platform is exactly the direction that his country will be going to. Now, when I said King Solomon, King Solomon said all his riches is for his people to make sure all their everyday basic needs is provided for. He was the wisest king that ever walked this earth. Because he's actually blessed with that. Now, you're trying to tell us that King Solomon wisdom is wrong. The same king that said, cut the baby in half. Come on, Minister Mayor, let's get behind this. I'm voting for Bernie Sanders, and he's going to win by a landslide. If they backstab him and we don't turn up, we deserve to get whatever this Republican Party do to our dumb glasses. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Frank. I would think he'd probably be like King Solomon and uh, Joseph, Joseph the May. Colored. Justin with the uh, multicolored coat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you're on top of Chicago. Yeah, good morning, guys. Good, good morning, man. I think that the Democrat Party is in trouble. It I is. think that the young people are going to rally the truth, as I just said, for Bernie Sanders, the colleges, and all of this because they don't see the Democratic Party getting it. Even, even, the, even the local people don't see the Democratic Party getting it. Did you see what happened to Joe Biden? Man. <laughs> that, 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 he that, 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 that was crazy. When I looked up and saw Joe Biden under 10, I was like, they just don't get it. Brother Hall, you're right. They just don't get it. Brian, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. I got to say, I agree with me. There are other colleges call these crazy as hell, I would like to say. Y'all better watch these Democrats. They're already trying to pass this bill, H5383. No one is talking about it. And um, nobody wants Bernie Sanders in there. I, Trump got my vote. We put another Democrat in there. Y'all better get somebody better than that. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Brian. I'm telling y'all, y'all better wake up and smell the coffee. It's the talk of Chicago, 1690. We'll be back. I think Bernie, y'all, Bernie, like, I'm not voting for Bernie. Can you do the last line? The uh, brought to you by? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Miss that. Ty. You and Sonya on the camera. Go. <coughs> Man, I think what people are missing is the same thing uh, with uh, with Trump. I mean, Trump has a certain group that will vote with him. <laughs> and I think there's a certain group that are like, I'm not participating <coughs> in this nonsense at all, and they they uh, they kind of drop out. The question on the table, as I see it, is: Are the people who've been waiting for Bernie Sanders or or a Bernie Sanders, Sanders like candidate? And once he truly becomes the nominee, then they will be involved. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That there's people just waiting for something different. That's because that's all they, they that people are. They want true change. It's, we know that things change, but things used to change at a slower pace in the world. Now, with all this technology and you know things, everyone wants things like this. Things are changing all the time. Uh, that's what they're looking for. They are looking for a different candidate. There's no doubt that Bernie Sanders is a different candidate. So now it will be different on the left with Bernie and different on the right with Trump. 
Different on the left with Bernie he's saying he gonna take all that money you I made. Think he can win. Different with Bernie saying, you know all that money you made and you got in your four hundred one k and all how your stuff. He wants to drain all of that. He wants to take all of that and give it, give it to the people outside. Well, you gotta realize there's also uh, that there's uh, the House and the Senate. He can't do anything by himself, and he's not. There's, there's not going to be a big sweep of social democrats throughout the nation. I mean. They may be lucky enough to uh, to win a few. He wants to take all of that and give it. Give but and you know, if Bernie wins, they may even be able to do a few things. But I don't think they can do anything that quite that major. You know, the Tea Party put some hellified things on the Republicans. I don't think the, the Social Democrats at this point are closing in to those type of numbers. The question would be, would there be a movement if Bernie does win? Will there be a movement in the middle of his term? No, because I think that there's more black people planning to vote for Trump than people are even thinking about. Like, I think, like, I think it is going to be not just that they're, I think that You go with the devil you know as compared to the devil you don't. And I think, like, for all of the craziness that the Democrats have put in the universe for Trump, it's like people are used to it now. It's like I feel like people have tuned that shit out. Like, they be like, the only people paying attention to that. Uh-oh, what's up, brother? What's going on, brother? Grab a seat. Yes, put him sir. right there. You got 15, we doing, you got 15 minutes. 15 minutes? He don't remember. <laughs> he wasn't here. No, he no, he don't remember me. Long, 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 long before here. Oh, okay, he okay. grew up. Okay. Hill Hill neighborhood, right? Uh -huh. Well, I'm really on the Avalon side. I know. <laughs> I know. Was that you, me? Pull him, huh? Pull him closer. Yeah, let me. Um, this is. Maze, this is something I want you to read in your spare time. Okay. Um, this is for me, right? Yes. Mm hmm. Um, we on commercial, right? Hold on, Mama. Um, yeah. Yes. You were asking about blacks. Uh, I was listening, trying to, while well, trying to find a parking spot. Um, Come on. Get you in the camera. Oh, you're on Facebook. Oh, oh yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. That's I, know. I, know. I, know. I know. That's that's part of the reason I was terminated. But it's okay. Um. Okay, I need Todd you to scoot over. Me be right here. Yep. I think the way we're going to do this is this. Uh-uh, hold on. You stay right there. I'm going to just change this. This one. Right there. Right here? Yep. And I'm going to just do this shot. And let's flip, flip. Let's pull Todd. And yeah, your boy, uh, Trump, he did the... He's doing the whole nine yards. Get rid of the justice, the, the prosecutors. Get Stone, Flynn, and uh, the other asshole. Get them all out of jail. Go back in. Do it all over again. Hmm. Wash, rinse, repeat. You learn from Illinois. Well, uh, hey, your, your new mayor's. What? What? Don't get yourself. Don't. I'm, don't hurt yourself, brother. I was in front of at the two and a half town hall meetings asking about the water department. Oh, we're looking very carefully into it. I was terminated in December, hmm. so I have no delusions about what's going on. Okay. If you stand for black, there's an X on your back. Period. That I believe. We got to change that. Well, we're not gonna change it because too many people don't identify with what black actually is. Okay. See, when when they people see you, they'll say black Christian or black Baptist, black Methodist, black Muslim, but we don't see what they're saying first as black. We want to identify with everything else afterwards, mm. and that's the problem. That's the biggest that. problem. I concur. I concur. I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I, I remember you from childhood, man. You remember Southeast Little League? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. You used to uh, hit home runs out for time. No, I no, didn't play. He, he didn't play. Yeah, I didn't play. He didn't play. But I, I did go. I know. I played. I was, we, we the same age. And, uh. You 42? No, yeah. you're 57. I'll be 57. <laughs> Todd, I, I, you, don't, you don't remember me from childhood, but I do remember you. <laughs> yeah, he obviously you do. Yeah, I, lived in, I lived, grew up on 89th and Phillips. I was, yeah. at, I was in the Valley of the Hill. Mm -hmm. He was on the other, in the other Valley of the Hill. Yeah, I was just thinking yesterday, damn, I grew up in a great neighborhood. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, 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 well, it was, it wasn't, but the thing is, what we grew up in, white folks driving past us, calling us niggas, throwing bottles, chains. I remember that at seven years old. All right. Old. Yeah, yeah. It you got to, we gonna go till 17. To 17? 17, 17. Okay. 717, okay? Like the me. <laughs> Way from me, thinking about you every night and every day. It's something hard, I know. And I never should have let you go. And I love for you was stronger than I ever knew. But I believe tell you so. But I never should have let you go. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. You know how we do at the top of the hour. I got to say what's up to the rest of the WVON morning show team. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? Got to say what's up to Sonia Escobar. She is the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, as well as my co-host, Todd Stroger. Now, y'all, Todd is over here. He's in deep contemplation because you know what I, I, I was reading the comments. Oh, I was thinking because I was gonna say our next our next guest goes way 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 back with Todd, but Todd, you know Todd didn't even don't even know because Todd don't even remember when he was playing strikeout in the Southeast Little League getting getting. Oh, I forgot you ain't played strikeout. Strikeout's different though. I know strikeout's <laughs> I different. Played a lot of strikeout. Did you play a lot of strikeout? I, did. I think I love strikeout. All right, but anyway, guys, I'm gonna tell you what. Um. Probably about, was it three years ago? About three years ago, we did a story that I want to say really established uh, the power of the lion's den and what we could do. Um, we heard the story of what was going on in the water department, uh, the discrimination and the racism that was going on in the water department. Uh, and you know what, brother Lucio Batoy came in and described to us what was going on with his lawyer so much so that we called the water department in and was like we got to understand what's going on uh i wanted to and this brother has been reaching out and i wanted to get an update as to what's going on so lucio i want you to uh what well, i want wvon family i want you to welcome back to the morning show brother lucio batoy how you feeling this morning brother I'm doing well, brother. How yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, Lucio, now tell us about how the story. Initially, the story was you were working at the depart water department, and what happened? What happened is that there have been discriminatory practices against certain people, specifically those of color, to keep us out of promotions, favorable assignments, and transfers. Uh, we had uh, racist emails, and the old regime changed and brought some new people in, and new players, Randy Connor, Dwayne Hightower, and others came in promising a new day. And what we ended up getting was more of the same, but just new faces doing more of the same. Uh, since that time, I've been terminated, and what they used to terminate me was things that I posted on Facebook. Not my not my job performance, which is exemplary. Wait, you got fired for Facebook? Uh-oh. Hmm. Yes. Uh-oh, I'm nervous. Yes. I'm getting nervous. You got fired for Facebook. Now, I, now, how do you get fired for Facebook? Now, what was you saying on Facebook that got you fired? Well, uh, my Facebook page has been public for years, and I am completely anti-religious because I'm completely pro-black. Okay. And in my page, I prove the truth that all religions are false. Um, a couple of I had many employees that requested to be on my page. I don't send out Facebook requests. But one employee asked me to be on my Facebook page, and then 
saw what was on there and said he was offended, he was threatened, and I was fired subsequently because of that. Even though these things have been public for well over five years. Man, what was you saying, man? What, what was you talking about, man? Well, what I the things that I say, uh, I, I, I describe uh, certain religious denominations because of their idiocy. Uh -oh. and not knowing their background. And this is what offended some of my coworkers. When I bring the Bible to them and I ask them, can you tell me like the Ten Commandments that Moses presented to the Hebrews? Mm -hmm. And they tell me and I show them by their Bible that they're wrong. To show them that you really don't even know what it is that you're kneeling down to, that you're owing allegiance to, yet you're willing to die for this, but you have no knowledge of it. But what you are is that you're black first. Okay, so and, and and when I bring this to people like that, they become offended, and I was a threat because I'm great at my job. I'm not just good. So I'm you great. were not fired because of poor of work not. performance. No, no, no. Now is that now is that legal? Now what is your lawyer saying about that? Uh, my lawyer told me actually don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so wait a minute, because you know you're on Facebook right now. I know right? that. I know that. I know. But this is more important. This is more important than my job. This is about what you say, what's in it for black folks? Right now, the water department is being ran by a commissioner who came in in front of his employees and said if he could, he would privatize the whole department himself. He said that to us. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if, how you feel, any employee, but if my employer tells me that he's looking for a way to get rid of me, mm -hmm. then I know he's not for me. Well, you know, that's we got a problem with that here in Illinois about trying to figure out who's for us and who's against us because, yeah. you know, they keep proving us that they're not for us, but we be right there voting for them. So, Lucio, it seems like you got an issue with freedom of speech. Very much so. It, it seems as though you have... Now, do you think it's a combination of freedom of speech and the fact that you've got a lawsuit going on with the Water Department well, and they use that? And then my question for you would be, my brother, is what is your desired outcome? Like, what do you want to see happen? Okay, um, it's the lawsuit, but before the lawsuit, I was working with a coalition of people to effect change now, not waiting for a lawsuit. In the water department? In the water department. And now, I, now, we've had a series of people, black people who have come in. You know, you said people of color, but on this show, we talk about black people. Yes, yes. They, they got their own fights. Um, and we have heard about every type of discrimination against black people, whether they were black and gay, whether they was black and male, whether they was black and female, exactly. straight, left, right, etc. Um, you kind of spirit, you were the first person to kind of come out publicly and talk about this. Um, but what do you want to see happen? Like what, what, what do you want from the water department? What I want from the water department is- Because you I do want, have a lawsuit. Well, I'm part of a class action lawsuit. And that class action lawsuit is to do what? That class action lawsuit is to address the prevalent racism, past racism and sexism and discrimination perpetrated by the Water Department. What I was trying to do was actually have effective dialogue with the Water Department to, to change things, to actually have a training program for new employees instead of just saying, hey, get in the hole and do what he's doing, actual training so we would have quality Employees. See, right now what's going on, a lot of the jobs that's being done by the Water Department are being redone, redone because the people doing them have no knowledge of what the hell they're doing. But because they're white, it's all right. And this is the thing that has continually keep going on. Meanwhile, blacks are training these guys, watching them advance, become foremen, assistant deputy superintendents, and just being basically crapped upon. What I would like to see happen is an open dialogue. I would like to see other water department employees step up and admit to the truth, not be forced to. See, when I started two years ago with this past December, we had a a, a, a hearing in front of the Progressive Caucus. I remember that. The progressive. Yeah. But is that the problem? Was that yeah. part of the problem that y'all went to the Progressive exactly. Caucus and was like, progressives, please help us as compared to going to the Black Caucus and saying this is what we got going on? Well, the on. Black Caucus turned their backs on us as well. Wait, what? Yes. Nobody wanted to touch this because what this is dealing with, we're going at the heart of the unions and we're going to heart, at the heart of the political base of the city of Chicago, which is racist. It always has been. And when you address this openly and honestly, people look at it and say, hey, wait a minute. What side of my bread is being buttered? Damn. So, Lucio, I guess I got to ask this question. Because how does, this is the challenge, and, and, and I want to bring this up because I think it's the challenge that most, a lot of black people face. 
oftentimes, because brother, you seem to appear now that you don't have an employment, and hopefully, because the water department, you get some good money over there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you stacked up some dough. But my question is, how do black folks who are working in an environment in which they know racism exists? And I mean openly active. Remember, y'all, this is the same department where we they was hanging dolls. They had the black people and working in cages. Remember when the black people had to work in the cages mm -hmm. and they would come by and say, look at the monkeys and all that good stuff. How do you balance that with trying to make a living and provide for your family? Well, what I saw was that a lot of black people divorced their blackness totally assimilated into the white, the European way of thought to say that I'm that they are less than, that they deserve that kind of treatment. That's the only thing that I could say because it makes no sense for a person who is proud of the job that they do to take low. If you do your job, you do your job well, all right? You know you do your job well. You should never allow somebody to tell you you did nothing and advance people in front of you. I would like to see them step up and speak out for themselves like I did. Unfortunately, you put that bullseye on your back. I got terminated. I, f I do this fight for uh, uh, Leslie Cook, who was told she couldn't come in uh, city buildings, to even to use the bathroom. I do this for Tracy Burns, who got a 29-day suspension. Very spurously, they keep doing these. And these are the people that have been speaking out with me. Look, y'all, so I'm going to tell y'all something. We're going to keep shining the light on these things because it can't. Let me tell you what. If somebody came up and told them that they was LGBTQ and they was discriminated against, the world would stop. Mm -hmm. If somebody was told that they were an undocumented immigrant and they were discriminated, the world would stop. And here we know, we've seen, we've heard, we saw people get fired. Black folks, you got to stop being scared to stand up for your black folks. But we also, black folks, got to stand up for our people when they stand up for us. Lucho, that's why we had you here today. I appreciate you coming to tell your story. And we're going to keep on top of this and keep on watching. Keep on sending the information, and I will read this document. Because it's a lot! <laughs> those are the charges. Those are my answers to the 16 charges that they brought against me. All right. 16 charges. Hey, y'all, we'll be back after traffic and the weather. Of the morning show. Good job, brother. Good right, job. Brother. Good Thank job. You. I appreciate you. I appreciate I'll you, read man. this and then we'll Please we'll do. we'll circle right, back. Uh, yeah, I still have people who complain about the water park. Yeah, I say, man, you need to complain louder, but they're they're afraid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's because it's a price to pay. Look, I let me just say this, and I and I it's like hold on, let me See, get like it. this. This taking books like this to work with me every day, showing this to black people. Mm -hmm. uh, stolen legacy. We don't want to look at this. Man, we don't want to look at it because we know we'll get jacked because the white boys will act crazy if you do that. Todd, scoot back to the middle. Yeah, and that's, and that's the problem. If you know for a fact that the black people are the oldest people on the planet, then why should you be afraid to be as great as we were to get to this point where we're at now, to even be alive? You're great. You're God. I'm talking to God right now. We talk God is everywhere at all times. I'm touching God. Breathing God, the only difference between you and this table is that you can think. So if you can think, you can create. What does God do? Creates. See, this is the ancient knowledge of our ancestry that we were taught to run from. And when I brought this to people, I became even more of a threat because the general superintendent was a man who had a big open Bible in his desk, on his desk, in a city building. <laughs> is that kosher? I, uh, depends, I guess. If you're Catholic, it is. <laughs> but not in a city building. Because as a general superintendent, you do business at that desk. Oh, I'm not tripping. I'm not tripping. Uh, and, and, Talk to that kid. Okay. Um, we need to know that there was something here before Christianity, Islam, Judaism. All right. It wasn't religion, it was a spiritual base. And that's what unites me with every black person because every black face I see, I love. Unconditionally. I love you. I love you because you're black. You are the original people of this planet. And if you know this, you also know that if you walk with God, talk with God, go back to the oldest people's language and find out what they said when they talked about God. And you drop the religion, you will see each other as black and love each other. 
unconditional. You would help each other. All right. All right. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate you too, brother. Listen, please read that. I will. I really mean it. I will. Ty, it's good seeing you again. What they did to you. Yeah, you know how things are. Yeah, but I'm glad you landed on your feet, brother. And remember, east side till we die. <laughs> <laughs> If you live on the east side, you might do that sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 he and I know. <laughs> it's getting better, though. All right. Take care. I never thought it was all that bad. <laughs> I never thought it was all that bad. I don't, I, nobody thinks their neighborhood is really all that bad for the most part. Because you know how to move around it. Yeah. I mean, there you know where to go. I mean, I think you can find bad in every place you go. It's like, but if you know, if you part of your, you know. Exactly. I need to get mine on the African American. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, are you proselytizing on the job? That's what Salim said was happening with our brother. Is it got something to do with the religion? I think it's like talking about your religious beliefs at the job. I think, you know, when yeah. Salim becoming other words, you got to Google him. <laughs> exactly. I'm re I was like, when I, I feel said. feel like I know it, but I really not sure. Right, you know, like, you can play it off. Like, Salim typed it. I was like, you speak. You you spelt that out. <laughs> that was like you might as well put super crab fragilistic aspialidosis up there. Exactly. Proselytizing. You said he was proselytizing at the job. Is it like prophesying or like sharing his religious beliefs? And oh, that's exactly what it sounds like. To yeah, me. I that's think right. I think and they I think they may have used that. I do think there is a price to pay, and I think you got to move in stealth. But I do think one of the things that I thought was interesting is tied this premise of shutting up and going to work and is that always a bad thing not in the case of that i mean i think there are people that are willing to take and pay the price and you when you start to speak up you pay the price i learned that the hard way when um pat dallin crew got me fired at the defender right it was like i was talking too much about things that Maybe they didn't want me to talk about it and they had the power, so I had to chill. Well, I didn't I chill. I told you, once, uh, once those Detroit people took over, it was all down here. <laughs> so I think that the thing becomes, Todd, how do you support a brother like that? Right? You know, like, at work, where you know, you know it's racism at the water department. Like, real talk. Like, real talk. You know he ain't, I mean, I think he mixed the religion piece into it. And I think if he was talking about at work, they gave him an easy way out. But you know when there's stuff that's bad at work, you know how it's the person that's telling you, man, there's some bull. And you be like, man, I'm just trying to do my job. Look, I got yeah, I got right. I got tuition to pay. Right. How do you balance that? Like, how do you balance your blackness with tuition? Or rent? And it's sometimes it seems like it's so easy for people, you know, like, especially if you got a family. Right, I always think about the activists that tell you to kill everything and throw everybody away because they don't got nothing to lose. Yeah, right. I'm not seriously. 
Like you pay attention to most of the people that's willing to fight that they ain't got no not I'm not talking about like the Malcolm X's and the Martin. I'm talking about right now, right here. No kids, no family, no wife, no house, no right, nothing. Uh, which is part of what makes them effective because they can lose it all. That's why most revolutions are really uh, done by youth. Yes, they have nothing to lose yet. I guess so. Then when we got sixty year old, and act- nobody, you know, no, no children, because your mm. children, uh, you know, you know how children, how you feel. Mm. See, I think that we got to stand in different. I think we got to fight in different ways. Like I think you got to be strategic. Let me go to uh, Karen. Karen, you on Talk Chicago 1690. Karen? Hey, good, mo- good morning. Hey, good morning. Sister Karen, it was good, good seeing you yesterday. Oh, you always, always wonderful when we come together. Whenever we come together, that's a wonderful thing. But check it out. What that young man just said, ain't no such thing as strategic in a war. Let, let me just say this. Huh? If, many, if many of us did what he did, they wouldn't attack so many of us. We all got to take a stand. You're not going to win. So it's not like you can. I did this back in 2006. Your freedom comes when they know they can't mess with you. So I suggest many of us do that. We're going to have to lose in order to win. Guess what we going to lose? Their way of living. They have put wants on us. We don't need what they have put so much into what, I, what we want. I commend that young man for standing up. And until many of us stand up and say no more of this, it's going to continue. I love y'all. Have a good day. I uh, love you too. I'm, but I have to disagree. I don't want to go to war with nobody who has no strategy at all. Because they're going to wind up getting, that, that's called unnecessary casualties. Like, now there is, but so I'm never going to war. So just so we clear, that is always a plan. And it's a backup plan. And it's a plan for the backup plan that fails when you go to war. Because when you go to war and you're a general, then you have lives that you are responsible for. And your ultimate goal is to bring those lives back. Now, my thing is, I often say, and this is my point, a lot of people, a lot of us will call people sellouts, Uncle Times, etc., but then be mad that their kids is running around the streets. Right? Because you didn't give them a job. Now, I mean, not because they didn't give a job, but because... They can't feed and take care of. We don't need more people depending on the system. We got to figure out where you fight to be most effective. And every time, every fighting, every, it's not the most effective use of our people is not getting them killed all the time. Uh, with that in my note, Todd, it's time for our amazing black fact. I'm so excited. This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black Facts. Fact, fact, fact. With today's Black Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host, Todd Stroger. All right, Mays, you know, I'm going back to a, an old favorite, Benjamin Banneker. Hey, I remember those used to come on Channel 32. He made the watch. Uh, no, he, he, uh, he actually he put, put together the first clock in uh, the colonial period. Uh, so, I mean, we're talking something that would be like, you know, five to six feet tall, uh, which was a, a major feat because it actually worked. Uh, he also used to do an almanac, which was well received. Uh, he was uh, very intelligent in that when the man who had designed how Washington was supposed to be uh, built, when I say Washington, I mean D.C., the district itself, left and took the plans with him, he recreated the plans from his head. Uh, Benjamin Banneker is someone who we should all know and remember and let our people know that yes even though there weren't a ton of black people running around being free we had some great people even in colonial days hey man that's cool and you know what todd we speaking of people running around free when we come back we're going to talk a little bit about the nba plus uh the old boy network reaches back to take a take a shot at kim fox We'll talk about it all when we come back. Talk Chicago 1690. All right, y'all. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night, you want to watch the first episode of the new season of the Illinois Minati podcast. Let me tell you, the Illinois Minati podcast is going to be 
off the chain. You are going to get names, pictures, information that no news station has. That's right, because it is tomorrow. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live. It will re be rebroadcast on all social media outlets. Tune in to the Illinois Minati Podcast. Sign up. Subscribe. Get alerts. Uh, you want to know who was the FBI mole? Tomorrow, you'll get an opportunity to see who the FBI mole was that took down the Sandoval operation. So y'all do realize that I'm going to have way, I'm going to beat the, I, you know, I really wanted the news to hire me to do this story, but I feel like um, people don't take me serious enough, so I'm going to keep on whooping them. That's what I think. I think I'm going to do the story myself and I'm going to break it apart and I'm going to tear it apart. You make sure you tune in tomorrow, Illinois Minati Podcast. Todd, you're on camera, man. Talk to the people. You know, I'm looking at the Wikipedia thing about Benjamin Bamker, and they actually don't don't mention him uh, and Dupont, which is kind of interesting in itself. Unless I'm missing something. And Dupont. Yeah, Dupont was the uh, the Frenchman who who drew out the plans for DC and left with him, and then uh, Benjamin Banneker redrew them from his memory. You know, back in those days, that was kind of important because you know the district was going to be the the center point for the government. So if you've been to DC, and I'm certain so many of us have you'll notice that it has um, the ramparts all around it. So it's built to defend from any uh, force that would come in and try to, to take it over. Uh, that's what all those turnabouts are, where you gotta go in all those circles all the time to get around to another street. Hmm. Uh, I would have I was kind of just forced to look at that. I actually wanted to look at something else. I didn't want to watch use Wikipedia. I mean, I already know some things. Wicked, about. wicked, wicked, wicked. Did everybody know what an almanac is? It's a book written, usually used by farmers, and it kind of uh, tells you when the sun rises and sets. Uh, during the year, what the, the weather uh, forecast will be. Very important. People still use the almanac. They tell you what's going to happen in the future and it should be. You know what I should have said? He also sent a letter to Thomas Jefferson about slavery saying this stuff sucks. That's interesting. It seems as if they have decided to take out his role in the planning of DC. Remember when those things used to come on Channel 32? That they did talk about him making DC on a grid. Right. Janine was looking up Schoolhouse Rock. She thought they did one about the uh, 15th Amendment, but she couldn't find it. Uh, I remember they used to do... Uh, Channel 32 had their own. Benjamin Banneker came on 32 during the banana splits. Oh, really? Man, it's been so long. <laughs> one banana, two banana, two banana, four.
for the reason why I sang this song. A violet's blow of grits as long as I'm with you. Except uh, let's get one away. No, no, the two of us can wait, gal. Spoken spunny. No bottom. So we will guess them from come every day. Temple the words that I like to say. So put something about it we should know about the L O V E. I got a thing for you, baby. I got a thing for you, baby. About the you should know about the L O V E. I got a thing for you. Stuff. Hang on my mind. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, George Stroger. It's hot. A couple things I want to remind you. First of all, it's a big, big, big weekend. I'm super excited, man. I got my tickets. My man, Vince Bass, got me four tickets to the NBA crossover. Ah, man, you got to check it out. Todd, I'm telling you, you got to bring Janine. You got to bring Claire. You know I'm bringing Bug, right? Look, Todd, we could, I could work something out. You know, I could give you one of the tickets, right? Uh -huh. We could just, I could get you two, and then I could have two, and then we could bump into each other, and you know, we could sit, you know, I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to give my son to a good, positive, young, <laughs> black woman with positive, you know, she, she come, what are you, an Indian he, come, he come from a good family, I, I'm just, you know, I'm just worried about your ability to pay our dowry. <laughs> hey y'all, but you want to make sure that, uh, about that <laughs> Make sure that everybody Look, the NBA is coming It's All-Star Weekend I'm saying that it starts tomorrow Because I'm going to be at all types of events McDonald's has got uh, Kenny the Jet Smith Tomorrow I'm going to be checking that out Plus you got Bleacher Report Everybody's going to be in town And you know what? Between tomorrow and Friday We are going to give a list of all the fun you can have Even if you can't buy tickets You can still have a great time for, and we're going to put some family fun together. Do not miss it, though. But I'm telling you, you want to see the convergence of pop culture, entertainment, and sports all in one? It is the NBA crossover. Get your tickets. I'm telling you now. I can't wait to see Don C. and Hebrew Brantley because they both from Chicago. Right? Plus, I told you, Muggsy Bokes. He was 5'3", man. 5'3". And Manu Bokes. That's smaller than me. Not much, though. All right. It's Talk Chicago, 1690 AM. Also, um, Todd, want to remind everybody, in case you did not see the Chicago Tribune this week, they re-released my, um, my string map. It was a little less detailed. But I have decided that I am relaunching the Illinois Minotti Podcast. It's going to be on Facebook Live tomorrow, 7 p.m. Uh, and then I'll rebroadcast it. But Todd, I've decided that it's going to be named... I'm, I, I'm tired of waiting on the press to tell the story. So I'm going to tell the story myself. Because, you know, you can't talk about it if you ain't living. I lived it. So, to yeah, me, I mean, yeah, you have a, you have a unique position. But I'm going to tell you what. I, for all of the people that are watching, I am going to tomorrow for the first time provide exclusive pictures of the federal mole on the podcast. The federal mole that took down all of the western suburban mayors. I'm going to actually show you who he is tomorrow. That was apropos. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <That's music. laughs> apropos. Uh -huh. Spell it. Sleep! <laughs> 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 yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So tune in to the Illinois Minati Podcast every Thursday at 7 p.m. Starting tomorrow, I am going to crack open the entire scandal that took down the mayors in the West Suburbs. And I'm... Because you know what? You know the federal mole is still moving around, and I don't even think people know who it is. Am I going to be in trouble for sharing this picture? Like, you know, like, if you know... You mean, like, 
Real uh, trouble? Yeah. <laughs> like, hopefully he don't come see me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, man. All right. But check this out, Todd. Um, I have decided that. So I have. Oh, you know what I've decided? What? Uh, since Melanie's going on that South Africa trip. Mm -hmm. You going to? No. Damn. I'm going to be ignorant that whole time she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> What are you gonna do, man? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna misspell some words. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I'm gonna spell night with no G. That's Dang right. it. N I T E. Take that, Melody. All right. Um, she'll never know. <laughs> she'll never know. Todd. Um, okay. So I have. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be. I wanted. To, so here's the thing. I gotta talk about this. I want to talk about what's happening with Kim Fox because I need to break it down. Can I please offer a full disclaimer? Please do. Okay, the first of all is, as I break this down, I am breaking this down dispassionately. I love Kim Fox. I have always been supportive, even in the challenging times whenever I have been supportive. Now, there have been people that have alluded to the fact, and I want to be clear about this, because, Ty, you know, the simplest way for... Um, the easiest way for people to discredit me, Mays Jackson, is to say that he's getting paid by the opposition, right? And what people love to do is say, oh, Mays is working for the person who who, who has the money. And I'm going to tell you, I've decided that after this election cycle, I'm going to become the black Darth Vader. Did I say that wrong? The black Darth Vader? <laughs> <laughs> but, because I'm going to do my thing. But in this case... People have accused me of working for t for Bill Conway in the in the in the Kim Fox camp in an effort to probably just sh because I don't like the foreigners that much. So the easiest way to discredit Mays is to say, "Oh, he's working for he's working for Bill Conway," and I have done nothing but show love to Kim Fox. So I'm gonna break this thing down dispassionately because I need for Black folks to understand the. This what we are watching right now is the old boy network coming full force and coming all the way around to attack criminal justice reform. As they are across the nation. As they are all across the, the nation. <laughs> so let's say, and I'm gonna say what Kim Fox said, I don't think the juicy smoothie situation was handled properly but as I have told you on numerous occasions the way politics works is they look for one small issue one small thread that they can pull and then they take that thread and they unravel the whole sweater right so they'll take one thing and then they'll blow it up and right now Todd what we're seeing is the earned media the traditional media is doing the dirty work of the system, the old boys network. Mm. So see, there's earned media and there's paid media, right? So Bill Conway is putting hundreds of thousands of dollars of paid ads on. But did you notice now that, that Dan Webb is now tied re-indicting Juicy Smoothie? Forcing the story back into the news at a high level. Because what does that mean? That means there's going to be charges of Juicy Smouye. Yes. Juicy Smouye is going to talk the whole time. Oh, yeah. Right? Because remember, he's still maintaining his innocence. At the same time, the media outlets are now casting a shadow of doubt on Kim Fox's credibility. Now, let, 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 let me do this real quick. Yesterday, we saw a group of black pastors stand up and compare this situation to James Comey. The Co they called it Comey-esque. Now, I'm going to tell you that most black folks That's above our head. was like, what the hell is... And, and I, I, You know what? I, I have paid attention. I don't even know what that means. However, the key was they weren't talking to you. Because here's what's going to happen. Black folks are going to stay loyal. We're going to stay loyal regardless. Because we know the fix is in. However, who she needs to keep are the white liberal women. Right. And so when they said it was James Comey-esque and you saw them bring Donald Trump into the situation, 
What it was was an appeal to hold on to those white women who they're not faithful. No. Now, here's the other challenge. The challenge is delivering that message with black ministers to white women. The challenge right now, what Kim Fox should be looking at is where are all your white surrogates? Where are all those white women that was walking around with you? Those are the people that need to step up and be talking about Comey. Yes. Do you really think that a group of black ministers appeals to what? Think about how we talk about black ministers on this show. Now, Reverend Minister Mays might have a problem with that. But y'all, we're going to talk about this when we come back because the fix is in. All right? The fix is in, but we got to be smarter than that. Let's talk Chicago No, y'all don't understand. See, and here's the thing. People want to ask questions about records and all that stuff. Nobody, it's not going to boil down to that. Like, white folks feel like they're always qualified. His record is he's a billionaire. Right? Like, it takes somebody to uh, help you understand. Again, it takes like a, a person who finds out that you are, that the white people love you as a black person until they got a white candidate that they like. <laughs> right and so as much as I love Otis Moss and as much as I love all of those ministers up there when you said Jane Comey-esque you, you clearly define that you are not talking to black people cause Todd you're pretty intellectual I think so but yeah I, I didn't see the connection in the I mean, it had to be spelled I, out I, I, I thought I helped you see it I didn't help you see it no that's what I said it had to be spelled out that was you. You were the spell. And it's like, again, that message, the, you, you gotta, what is the message closing? So now you gotta think about what happens. You gotta think about what, ha what is the response to Juicy Smoothie? Right? Cause what she can't do, afford to do, is get into a war, a war of wars with Ju Juicy. No. Cause every time he raises it up, and he's gonna keep saying he's innocent, which only makes the press report that he's innocent, and then they're gonna ask her, and she's not gonna be able to. So the thing is, and you heard Donna Moore say it. Now what they're gonna do is rely on the press. And I can tell you from a to journey, grind her. The press is very good at grinding. They will ask and ask and ask, and everything will lead back. When they were beating my my uh, the crap out of me about the tax, every week there would be something about the tax in the newspaper. So I was in the paper for like some kind of unprecedented uh, like six weeks in a row, being on the cover. It might have been more than that actually. So when they do that, it doesn't matter really what they're saying at that point becomes uh, a point where in people's heads where they're just like oh paper negative there's something negative something negative is in the paper and they have white options they got white options oh, you're right they have an option uh, something that they can choose that is different from what what is in the paper so you know they you know they call it the slow drip or beating the, the drum you just keep beating the drum where boom 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 it just becomes part of your life. Like oh. the challenge is, as I talk about this, somebody today will be saying that I'm I'm working for Conway, as compared to saying like, man, let's holler at our guy. But it's all good. Well, you gotta you gotta 
set the, the stage of what's going on. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't. I think they're running a national campaign locally. Say again. I think they're campaigning to a national audience locally. Uh-huh. Right? Like... You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson Todd. What we are watching right now is white folks forming like Voltron. Let me tell you what's happening right now. You are seeing the convergence. Did you say Voltron? Yeah, Voltron. You're seeing the convergence of media. See, I think the thing that people don't always understand. Um, I think the thing that people don't always understand is that it's not about fair and it's not about record. It's about what they can make you wear. And so, Todd. That's right. Wear the jacket. And I, I think that... One, I hate to always go back to me, but that's exactly what it was. When I went around, people asked me about every tax under the sun that had nothing to do with the tax we did. But they knew from the press that there was something, so that anything that affected them, they felt it had to have been done by me. So, so I, think I think that's, that's what, what they're trying, trying to do. They're trying to just make a big blanket where she fits, fits under every, every bad thing that's going on. And then, one, you know what concerned me today? I was reading Cass. And you know, I, Ty, first of all, I want to say you were right. You told me so. Okay. Record that. <laughs> but remember when I was thinking like, okay, I was thinking Dan Webb was was with the team. Oh, right. Remember, <laughs> you failed miserably, man. But I thought I thought that Webb, Dan Webb, was with the team, and I just said that he would not politicize this election. I really do understand what they're saying with this being Comey esque, right? Like being a student of politics. You know, if in case you don't know what Comey esque is, it was remember when Hillary Clinton got off the plane. And she found out that they were, the FBI was opening up another investigation of her right before the election. And everybody said they're doing it because it's politics and they want to help Trump win. Yeah. And then James Comey, James Comey wound up leaving and then it turned into the big old scandal that led to all of this stuff. Right. I think, Todd, that what is happening. I think it is I think it's real. Like I do not doubt that the white folks have somewhere at the secret society meeting cuz remember this is Illinois and this is Illinois that's why you want to turn into the Illinois Minority podcast tomorrow at 7 o'clock because we're going to break stuff like this down. But there's some retreat where Dan Webb who is probably one of the top lawyers and has made lawyers and judges and all that good stuff. Oh yeah. Right? They probably all got in a room somewhere far down the line and was like, here's how we do this. And now what has happened is they've got the judicial system working because now Kim Fox doesn't have a say in this. This is now a special prosecutor mm -hmm. who can't nobody touch. Then you've got the press, particularly the white press. You know, John Cass is my friend, but man, I feel like he is putting the gas... He is starting up. He is putting all the arguments that cross white people's mind and starting to cloud their judgment. Mm -hmm. I think that the silence of white liberal women from the north side is deafening. When I saw those preachers line up yesterday, I said, I'm not sure who that... Remember, because then... Cass was like, well, I was waiting for the big the big Jesse Jackson smooch. Remember, remember last time? And, and it's like, the things that we find appealing sometimes are often the biggest turnoffs to white people. Yes. Right? Oh, so when we think we're going to religion, and you got the, mm -hmm. well, and that's on 2579, all that, the white folks are saying, 
This is not very... This is not very state's attorney-like. Yes. But and then... The religion, religion, they, they, they just kind of... Turn off. off. Yeah, they're just like, like what, what Bible? Bible? And then... Right, what Bible? And then, at the same time, it happens coincidentally on the same day that she's freeing Ronald Watts, the people from Ronald Watts. Now, I'm going to say this one more time, and I'm not trying to trip. But I think if you're going to have a press conference with them in an election... You need to make sure everybody got a suit and town. Because mm. again, the picture that the white people are looking at is not the same picture we're looking at. And the black folks ain't going to go nowhere. Right. The black folks ain't going nowhere. But if you show up and they see people that they like, you know, uh, I think they were guilty. He might have did something, but you know those black guys are guilty anyway. Yeah, exactly. I, I I I am just wanting us to be aware of sometimes I feel like I've been blessed because I did grow up in Bolingbrook so I see things through sometimes white people's eyes mm -hmm. and I can understand how they're interpreting how we see it because it's not what you mean to say but how the people take it and so all I'm suggesting is guys is that black folks you got to be super aware and we got to figure out a way to inspire turnout. Because right now, with everybody thinking that this is already a done deal on the black side, who are the black people coming out to vote for? You know, George Dunn, when uh, when Mayor Daley became Mayor Daley and the, the state attorney's office was, was open, my dad wanted that. George Dunn said, no, don't take that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, he knew oh. what would happen. That the group, just like you're saying, will get together and say, we're going to put one of ours in. Yeah, exactly. This is Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. The station, 1690 AM. Yes, and no greater advice was given. Cecil Partee went there, and six months later, Cecil Partee was out. I don't know if it was six months, but the next election. Look at that picture. Yeah, they sure are friendly. Who are those people? <laughs> That is the minister? DOJ wants to reduce the sentence. Recommendation. So what's the difference between being the president and the Shah of Iran? That's what I want to know. Jeez. Now the president wants to be the judge and determine what the sentence should be. I can tell you from being the president, your job is to hire people who are supposed to be educated and experts in their field, and then you pretty much let them do what they're supposed to do. Unless you don't want them to. Well, unless it's so egregious, like, you know this is going to affect all of us in a negative way. But Mike Bloomberg is so rich that he's got two commercials running back to back. Right. must be on a loop.
Is this on the phone? They were supposed to be good. They just called five minutes ago. It's going to be on the phone. So they're still like 25 minutes out. Traffic crawling. They were supposed to be here at quarter two. Hey, so I got to rent a car, right? My car's in the shop. Pick up my rent a car for Enterprise. You know how you would do the walk around, the scratches, dings, anything bigger than a dollar or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, op I open up the car door and the car totally reeks of fresh weed. Yeah. I mean, not burnt weed, like somebody transported bales in it. Mm. So I'm like, oh, hold on a second. I go, I walk back in, you know, after they give me the keys, I was like, I'm sorry, but Chris, can you come out with me? I go, sit, I want you to sit in the car and tell me same thing you smell, I smell. He's like, well, somebody smoking in the car? He's like, just sit in the car. He goes, he sits in the car, he goes, this car smells like weed. <laughs> so, uh, so I got this nice documentation from Enterprise on a rental car. Customer uh, states that uh, car has the uh, odor of ca uh, fresh cannabis in it. Uh, Krish, uh, general manager Enterprise, agrees with c customer Todd. Car smells of marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, I'm, like, going under the seats, picking up the trunk and stuff, because yeah. it's got Michigan plates. See if anybody left it Right, in. because it's, it, somebody left something, did something in that car, and the smell will not come out of it. Todd, how long is this interview? Do, like, ten minutes. All right. Do I have, who is this? Jimmy Do I have a, Her name's up on the screen. And why are they in Illinois? Are they, this are they is, hiring uh, some people? This is direct from the other side. The big desk on the other side. They better hire some. Oh, is this the census? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Janine's like, shoot. You could, I know plenty of people from Illinois that you can, can do the census uh, stuff. I said, I'll tell names. What do you mean? Um, oh, is this? Uh, I thought we were having somebody from. Uh, oh, is this the Abrams lady? Kind of yeah. Thing? Yeah, Claire, not Claire, Janine was saying we got plenty of people who are doing the census here. I know, that, but they, they probably did a national deal and are trying to make their, back, you know, That's they went to the national party and said. Right, I get it. I get it. I slow, but I get it. Yeah, this is. and shine. Seven three five nine. 
I wanna please you. I wanna tell you, baby, that I need you. Mm, very last try. Mm, come on now, let's stop. Who can love you like me? Nobody. Who can set you like me? Nobody. Who can treat you like me, my baby? Nobody, baby. Nobody, baby. Can love you like me? Nobody. Who can give you what you need? Nobody. Who can feel you all night long? Nobody, baby, nobody. I want tonight for me and you. So come here, baby, and let me do it to you. You are, <laughs> you are too. This is Talk Chicago, sixteen ninety AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, George Strobe and Todd. You know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVON morning show team. What's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, who is all up into the key sweat right now. Mm-hmm. All up in the key sweat. I mean, I was like, you know, I hit my cue. And she was like, nobody, nobody is on the switch. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say what's up to my co-host, Todd Stroger. But Todd, you know what? It is that time again. It is that time of the decade. It is that, t- you know, it, it seems like this time of the decade comes around so quickly. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, once every 10 years, it is important that we get out and be counted. Uh, and when I talk about counted, I'm not talking about hypothetically, hypothetically, hypothetically. Oh, hypothetically. I'm getting one of those. I'm going to die. You're getting a hypo- and you're going to get shot with a hypothetical needle? Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is not hypothetical. It is literal, i.e., it is the literal census count. Now, the count is important because it determines what's, what resources we get. It determines our what our maps look like, who we're going to be elected, what type of resources that we get. And here to talk to us about it right now is Fair Count. Uh, And Fair Count is dedicated to partnering with hard to count communities to achieve a fair and accurate count of all people, uh, well, particularly in Georgia, but as well as the rest of the nation in the 2020 census to strengthen pathways for greater civic participation. And here to talk to us about that is Dr. Janine Abrams McLean. She is the vice president of the organization. How you doing this morning, Doc? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, you're welcome. Glad to be. I'm, we're glad to have you. So talk to us about Fair Count and what you all are doing. So Fair Count was uh, founded by Stacey Abrams, who ran for governor of Georgia in 2018. Um, she also happens to be my second oldest sister. And so when um, after the election, she was thinking about what she could be doing, uh, even though she didn't have the title of governor, to make things better for Georgia. And so the two things that came out were the you know fighting voter suppression, and so she started Fair Fight. And then um, the census, because as you said, the census determines so many aspects of our daily lives from federal funding for health care and education and our roads um, to determining our political power and, um, you know, uh, our school zones. And so um, she tapped me. Uh, I have about 15 years of experience doing population-based research and uh, Rebecca DeHart, our CEO, and so we've been working um, in Georgia and around the country to try and make sure that everybody's counted, especially um, populations that the Census Bureau calls hard to count, which is people of color, young children, uh, um, uh, immigrants, but we don't think people are inherently hard to count. We think the systems that are in place to count them are just inefficient, and so um, that's what we're trying to do at Fair Count. So. You know, I know that you talked about people of color. I think that here in Illinois, we have a very particular 
dynamic. Um, and and one of the things that we find ourselves had one of the things we find ourselves doing is competing for resources, uh, particularly in this census debate. Talk to us about how why is it important for Black people specifically to be counted. Mm-hmm. So in 2010, the last census, 3.7 million Black people were missed. Um, and so just not counted. And um, I gotta stop you right there. So how, if yes. we didn't count them, how do we know that they weren't counted? So the census, this is the decennial census, which happens every 10 years. But the Census Bureau conducts the American Community Survey every single year. Got it. And that doesn't go out to every single household, but they um, they use those data to figure out um, to, to basically update the census information. And so as they get additional information, they can figure out um, about the population, they can figure out who was missed and who wasn't. And also based on different records, like administrative records and things like that. Got it. Now you all are based in Georgia. Talk to us about what you're doing in Illinois. So I am here in Illinois. Um, I'm actually speaking um, at an event today, Forefront, which is um, uh, the, the organization Forefront, which has brought together um, community and uh, faith and all kinds of leaders who are working on the census from around the state of Illinois. Um, There was a study conducted uh, by the Urban Institute and it estimates that Illinois will, um, could possibly see an undercount of 145,000 people. So those people would be missed in the census. And, you know, going back to why this is so important for the black community, out of that 145,000 people, about 71,000 um, are black black people. And so um, the, for the state of Illinois, each person brings in around $1,500 of federal funding for the state. Uh, and actually there's some new, new data that ends up, it looks like it might actually be a lot more than that, but we'll, we'll go with that number. And so if the undercount occurs, it's gonna be a loss of millions of dollars for our communities. Um, and so I'll be speaking today just sharing some of our best practices to help uh, faith leaders, community leaders, your, you know, the, the mom on the street, <laughs> anybody who wants to, you know, have a role in making sure that everybody is counted because it does affect every part of our lives. Now, Dr. Uh, McLean, how do people get involved in the census? How can they participate? Uh, besides, besides just feeling happy, besides just getting counted, because it seems like it, it seems like right now there are so many people with organizations, and everybody has got a census program. Is that some money out there people need to be trying to get pizza? <laughs> well, there, like I said, you know, the census is going to uh, for the entire nation. It's going to direct 1.5 trillion dollars in federal funding um, to states for um, every year for the next 10 years. But if you want to get involved, yes, if there are organizations, if you're a part of a group that um, is doing census work, join in, commit to be counted, act as a volunteer to tell other people about the census and why it's so important. Um, you can also, uh, you know, I think a lot of times when we, when we look at different groups that are involved, a lot of the people that are at those meetings and that are participating are going to be counted anyway. But what we need to be doing is making sure that we can reach groups that aren't necessarily civically engaged all the time. One thing that we're doing at Fair Count, that's a national initiative that we um, hope to be, you know, <laughs> will hopefully to be doing some work um, in Chicago and surrounding areas with, is our Black Men Count Initiative. Black men are one of the most undercounted groups historically, with certain age groups being undercounted by up to 10%. And so what we've done is we've partnered with the Boule to do our Black Men Count initiative to really uh, work with uh, black male leaders and the groups that they and the groups that they work with to reach out outside of their organizations to really make sure that black men are counted. Um, we've also partnered with the National Council of Negro Women. Uh, we'll be launching a program called Sisters for the Census. We talk that we hear a lot in the news about the power of black women um, for the election, and so it's time to make sure that we harness that power now to make sure that our families and our children are counted. Black and brown children are twice as likely to be undercounted in the census. And so any way you can do it, whether it's at your church, your neighborhood, whatever, you know, make sure that you get counted and that you tell other people to get counted. Okay. Well, that is Dr. Jeannie Abrams-McLean. She's the Vice President of Fair Count. 
they are counting black folks across the country for the United States Census. Now, Dr. Uh, Jeannie McLean, excuse me, they, I, um, they got this up here for me. <laughs> Dr. Okay. So do I say Dr. McLean? How do I do this? Just say Janine. Janine. <laughs> Janine. Yes. So Janine. Yep. Uh, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> See, you laughing because I, hey, look. So Janine, um, one of the things I just want to advise you, right, is that we right, you know, Chicago is a pretty clandestine town. And so as you bring these initiatives back to Chicago, please make sure that you are working with Chicagoans who know Chicagoans. Because what we find oftentimes is the people that have the national access get the funding to do all of these programs and then they come mm -hmm. in and team up with white folks or people that are deemed, they, they become political opportunities as compared to really counting. So when you come back, we love to sit down and talk with you in person and make sure that we are spreading this stuff around equally. But I'm proud, I'm excited for what you all are doing and we look forward to teaming up in the future. Make sure y'all go out and get counted. It is Dr. Janine Abrams McLean. She's the Vice President of Fair Count. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right, y'all. This is the WVOA Morning Show. Now, you know I got to get out of here a little bit early. Um, so one of the things I want to do is just remind everybody, tune in tomorrow night. Todd, I have become determined that right here, Mays Jackson is going to single-handedly defeat, I'm going to beat the Sun-Times and the Tribune as it comes to telling the, the story of the unraveling of Chicago's corruption, or of Illinois corruption in politics. And so it starts tomorrow with the Illinois Minotti podcast. Todd, I'm going to be showing pictures. Uh-oh. Pictures. We're moving up a level. Pictures. Tomorrow, if you want to know who the federal mole is that took down the western suburbs, you are not going to want to miss the Illinois Minotti podcast. I'm not going to miss it. Now, Todd. I did want to say with the census, <laughs> and I thought I posted it, but maybe because I, I knew I didn't. Uh, there is a day coming up where they are doing hiring for people to go out and work for the census and our our local uh stan moore and michelle harris and uh why don't come talk to us in front of black people you know it's like we got the biggest i'm gonna tell you i at yes after yesterday's meeting i'm i'm pretty confident having gone to um a lot of political meetings i think we might got the biggest black political organization right now like that's focused on politics but they be telling people stay away from us. It's okay though, because we don't bite you. Well, I'm gonna find that information and let you know so you can post it. All right. Also, can you all do me a favor today? Can we give um, brother Cam Buckner some love today? Can I read this whole House Bill 4865? What it will do? Let me just tell you, because y'all, the lesson for the black people, and I think this is something that all black people can get can get behind. It amends the Business Enterprise for Minorities, Women, and Persons with Disability Acts. Provides that it shall be established as a goal to award state contracts to businesses owned by descendants of American slavery in a total dollar amount that is proportionate to the percentage of such persons who are residents of this state. Provides further requirements concerning awarding of state contracts to businesses owned by descendants of American slavery. Requires reporting concerning the disparity between the representation of descendants of American slavery in state contracts compared to the percentage of such persons who are residents of the states. Specifies further requirements concerning waiver requests under the act. Amends the Illinois Public Labor Relations Act. Requires labor organizations to establish and maintain membership, a membership that includes descendants of American slavery that is proportionate to the persons of people who are residents of the state. And report these actions. Defines the term minority person to include a descendant of American slavery. Makes conforming changes. Todd, right here on this morning show, we have talked I remember it began with me looking at the disparity study in 2014 and us saying, realizing that out of an $81 million budget, only $310,000 went to black contractors at the Chicago State University, the blackest school in the universe, $81 million, and it set off a wave. It got to us and for the black people. We built an organization, and now, as we have pledged in our meeting, we will try to pass 
one piece of legislation every year that moves black people first. But Todd, if we can't talk about the black, the fact that black folks can't get contracts because we can't say black, we can't define ourselves. You know how they say bilingual this, bilingual that, bilingual this, bilingual that, we gotta add this and that? Guess what, y'all? This is some, you need to call your state rep, your state senator, black, white, Asian, Latino, and everybody needs to recognize our role in this state. I also got one more thing I want to point out. Well, I want to say, you know, all this, this really started getting underway under, under Ronald Reagan. Remember when you told me that people thought that the world was going to end? Well, it did end in some ways. We uh, just, we noticed it, then we, we went on. But that was really the, when the ball really was rolling for the destruction of uh, affirmative action throughout the country. Speaking of Especially going into universities. Mm. Speaking of affirmative action, looks like the Latinos are at it again. Why is Alderman Byron Sigcho Lopez organizing a sit-in for Woodlawn, for black families in Woodlawn? Can I, remember I told you, okay, so this is the thing I need for y'all to understand. Did y'all, did I mention the fact that there was a sit-in in front of the mayor's office? So there was a sit-in in front of the mayor's office, a protest, and it was led by people who were going to negotiate for Woodlawn, for, against the Obama library. Now, I'm here to tell you I got challenges with the Obama library, but I'd be damned if some people from, some white folks and some Latinos from some other neighborhood are going to come in and negotiate. So now they decided that they weren't okay with the negotiations and so they're going to hold the sit-in. Now what happens when that happens, black people, is that when they get tired of the sit-in, they negotiate with those people for your neighborhood. Hmm. See how that works? So when you listen to all the news, you got everybody saying, oh he on our team, he stood up for us. Would you like, how would you like to be the sixth, I mean, the fifth ward alderman, the twentieth ward alderman, and you got to take direction from an from a mayor who says she don't care about aldermanic prerogative, and an alderman who lives who really represents Latinos, telling you what needs to happen in the black community. Cause, and then they found a black person to stand up there. I told y'all about these t-shirt games. I told y'all about this. <laughs> and they elected their own alderman, and so now they get to be in every meeting. Meanwhile, y'all running around here wondering what happened. They are stealing your lunch as we speak. Hey y'all, it's the Top of Chicago, 1690 AM. So for Jennifer Tanyano, we gotta get out of here early because of the Urban Riz Business Roundtable brought to you by Aero Capital Management. So for, Je for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. Maze, I want my biscuit. Uh, for Sonia Escobar, News from the other the Soul Plane. Speaking of that, did you see Al, Al uh, stole my, I want my daddy's records and turned it into a promo? <laughs> no, I told him about that yesterday. Don't be stealing my stuff for Ty Stroger, my co-host. I am the host of the WVOA Morning Show every day asking what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Man, you said we out of here. Peace. Live from the WVON newsroom, here's our news. <sighs> Good show today, y'all, I think. We made it. We made it. Now I'm going to be in trouble. Right, because the Kim Fox people gonna say Mays is working for the opposition. I'm just trying to tell you what you don't see. Yeah, it's, right. it's like, and you the the most effective way is general. Let me stop. It's like don't nobody want to hear me when I talk regular. Well, uh, you know, when there are mistakes made, you gotta figure out ways to uh, fix it. But you also have to admit mistakes. That you know what, and people will. You know what will happen? It's like all, all her people will burn bridges, right? Cause the assumption. And I'm saying this: Kim is gonna win. I think Kim wins, and I'm for Kim. But I'm not for being disrespectful. No. And it's like, you gotta. Thank you, darling. Great team. Great job, okay. It's like, when I called it, it's like people look at, if I tell you to do something, I'm telling you for your own good, not for mine. 
And if I told you and then it happens, I got I'm gonna say I told you. But I, it it becomes offensive when people say you working against somebody. Like it's like you could do everything in the world to be helpful and somebody can come and just decide that they going to say some negative shit. And then you got to like your whole shit is like like everything you ever been on for the rest for the last 10 years or for the last 4 years don't count. Right. So all of a sudden somebody you ain't never talked to told you I'm working for Bill Conway. And I'm going to just tell you I turned down an ungodly amount of money to not work for him. <laughs> ungodly. But it's okay. Always the person who always it's like you I'm t- I, can I tell you after this election like, after this election, I have decided that I am going to be Darth Vader. Like, there's no win for... There is absolutely no win for me personally trying to be the team player when People will use you when they're in trouble or when they need help, but when it's time, then they kick you to the curb. Right? Like, right now, where are all them white women and all them? So here's what I want to say. Do all those white people that's, oh, that make the decisions, are they going to get their friends and saying, we gotta, where's all the white liberals that they're supposed to bring you? Because, see, the white liberals can just, they just going to be quiet. They ain't going to say nothing. They're going to be with you just far away. Hmm. No, I'm serious. Ty. Yeah. In a real camp, in, not in a real campaign, what should have happened in his response to that yesterday, there should have been white women and a coalition, not even just white women, but it should have been a progressive coalition of all them people, where's Mike Carbonargi? Where's Ann Williams? Where's Kelly Cassidy? Where's all of the people, right? And they'll give you money and everything because they can always raise more money. Right. But they ain't going to put their name in they, right? Because, again, white people love you until they got a white option. Yeah. They feel, they, when they feel their safety is threatened. Right. It's like, man, bro. It gets tiring. Always being the bridesmaid, never the bride. Mm, That's exactly right. Right? Like, everybody can always tell you why. They can tell you... Again, most people can tell you no, but they can't tell you yes. Yeah. I'm through dealing with middle management. And it's like I'm tired of getting stroked. Right? No is always a easy, convenient answer. Well, we can't. Or maybe, that's what I was about to say. We can't. That's, yeah, it's not really no. It's more like, man, I wish I could do that, but I can't. Right. It's like, I'm just telling you, I'm straight up getting tired of, I get a call from every, when Lori was whacking people, all the people who ignored me or played me to the left during the Rom administration, man, she just fired another black person. You wasn't even thinking about no black people. Mm-hmm. You was all good. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm, now I'm supposed to be, and it's like, am I, my ability to help is why I don't bring wood to the fire. And it's like, even like your boy Al, right? Al was the person who was orchestrating the carry thing. Now today, I could have just went ape shit. Sexual harassment, blah. Man, I could have Facebooked it. I could have went crazy. And I would have every right. Right. 
Think about this. These are the same people who was like, man, new Ken didn't get in trouble, didn't really call, didn't really do it, but was like, that's all we need to do is to explode, is blow it up. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you that the, this whole four-year cycle, all the people who was working against me four years ago to this moment right now mm-hmm. are now back at it. Up, down. I try to help as many people as I possibly can. Always. If I can help do it, I try. Even if I don't like it, I try to help. Anyway. <sighs> All right, y'all. It's time to go. I'm going to pick up my NBA credentials today. Peace out.